Are you looking to elevate the performance of your mini PC to new heights? Are you tired of limitations and want to squeeze every last drop of power from your compact computing device? But wait, won't you burn it up if you do? Let's explore overclocking. Welcome to Mini PC Tech, where we talk about all things Mini PC. This is Mike, your host. Overclocking can allow you to push a computer beyond its default specifications for a longer period while protecting the device from a meltdown. This is especially challenging for mini PCs, where there is less space for cooling. Just what is overclocking? Well as you might know, a computer runs on an internal clock that allows it to step through its processing instructions. The faster the clock, the more instructions it can handle. But also, the more heat generated. That's why a computer typically has two speeds. A normal speed for when it's mostly idle, and a burst speed for short intensive tasks. It's a balance between processing instructions as quickly as possible when requests come in, and overheating when they're not. Overclocking pushes these limits for better performance but must be carefully managed to avoid overheating. This is done by adjusting settings in the BIOS or using specialized software. Overclocking can make your mini PC faster and more responsive, which is great for gaming, video editing, and other demanding tasks. Essentially, you're unlocking extra power without spending more money on new hardware. However, you need to manage the additional heat generated to avoid hardware failures. Now that we've covered the basics of what overclocking is, let's weigh the pros and cons. Stick around to find out if overclocking is right for you. First, let's talk about the benefits of overclocking. Overclocking can significantly boost your PC's performance, making it faster and more efficient. This is particularly beneficial for gaming, video editing, and other resource-intensive tasks. You can maximize the potential of your existing hardware, getting more value from your investment. Instead of spending money on new hardware, you can achieve similar performance gains through overclocking, making it a cost-effective upgrade. However, overclocking does come with its own set of risks. Higher clock speeds generate more heat. Without proper cooling solutions, this can lead to overheating, potentially damaging your components. Overclocking can make your system unstable. You might experience crashes, freezes, or other unexpected behavior if the settings are too aggressive. Pushing your hardware beyond its intended limits can reduce its lifespan, leading to premature failure. So, overclocking offers improved performance and better hardware utilization at a lower cost. However, it also increases heat output, can cause system instability, and may shorten your hardware's lifespan. Understanding these pros and cons is crucial before deciding to overclock your mini PC. Next, we'll guide you through the preparation steps to ensure a safe overclocking process. Stay tuned! Now that we've covered the pros and cons, let's prepare for overclocking your mini PC. We'll go through the necessary hardware and software you'll need. First, let's talk about the hardware requirements. Choose a mini PC that's well-suited for overclocking, like the Intel NUC Enthusiast Series, Asus PN52, or Zotac ZBO X Magnus. Links to these are provided in the description below. These models have robust processors and good cooling systems. Effective cooling is crucial. Consider upgrading to advanced air coolers or liquid cooling systems to manage the increased heat. Selecting a mini PC that does not allow for adequate cooling will doom this project to failure. Consider upgrading to advanced air coolers or liquid cooling systems to manage the increased heat. You might even want to consider moving your mini PC to a special case that already has the ability to accept better cooling. Next, let's look at the power supply. Let's talk about power supplies. Overclocking increases power consumption, so you'll need a power supply with a higher wattage than the stock one. Look for a power supply with at least 90W or more, depending on your mini PC's requirements. Choose a power supply with an 80 plus certification, like bronze, silver, or gold, for better efficiency and reliability. Ensure the power supply provides sufficient amperage on the plus 12 volts rail, which is crucial for stable overclocking. 
check the connectors to ensure compatibility with your mini PC, and opt for high-quality connectors for reliable power delivery. Make sure the power supply fits your mini PC case. For very compact systems, consider high-capacity external power adapters. Examples include the Corsair SF series and Silverstone SX series for internal power supplies, or the Dell DA130PE100 and HP HSTNN Le40 for external adapters. I have provided links to these in the description below. Next, let's look at the software tools you'll need. Most overclocking starts in the BIOS, UEFI. Look for settings related to CPU clock speed and voltage. You can also use third-party software like MSI Afterburner or Intel Extreme Tuning Utility, XTU. These tools offer user-friendly interfaces for adjusting settings. I have provided links below this video to those tools. Monitoring tools are vital. Use software like HW Monitor, CPU-Z, CoreTemp or Prime95 to keep an eye on temperatures, voltages, and system stability. I have provided links to these tools as well in the description below. Now that you have the right hardware and software, it's time to dive into the overclocking process. Let's go step by step through overclocking your mini PC. These instructions are general guidelines. You need to look at the documentation for your individual mini PC. You might find some of this from the manufacturer, or in other blog posts or in forums like Reddit. First. Reboot your mini PC and enter the BIOS, UEFI setup. This is usually done by pressing a key like, delete, F2, or F10, during startup. Check your mini PC's manual for the exact key. Once you're in the BIOS, UEFI, look for the section related to CPU settings. It might be labeled as, overclocking, advanced CPU configuration, or something similar. Locate the CPU clock speed setting. This may also be referred to as CPU frequency or multiplier. Increase the clock speed incrementally. For example, if your CPU is running at 3.5 GHz, increase it to 3.6 GHz. Save the settings and exit BIOS, UEFI. Next, adjust the CPU voltage settings, often labeled as CPU core voltage or VCore. Increasing the voltage can stabilize higher clock speeds but also increases heat. Increase the voltage slightly, for instance, by 0.01 .01 or 0.02 volts. Be cautious, as too much voltage can damage your CPU. After adjusting the clock speed and voltage, save your settings and reboot your mini PC. Monitor the startup to ensure it boots correctly. If your system doesn't boot or becomes unstable, you might need to go back into BIOS, UEFI and lower the settings slightly. Once your PC boots, use monitoring tools to check the CPU temperature, voltage, and overall system stability. Software like HW Monitor, CPU-Z, CoreTemp, and Prime95 are great for this. Run a stress test for at least 30 minutes to ensure stability. If the system passes without issues, you can try increasing the clock speed slightly more. Repeat the process until you find a balance between performance and stability. To summarize, enter BIOS, UEFI, adjust the CPU clock speed and voltage incrementally, save settings and reboot, then monitor performance and stability. Repeat until you achieve your desired performance. Now that you've learned how to overclock your mini PC, it's important to follow some safety tips and best practices to keep your system running smoothly. Let's go over them. Regular monitoring is crucial. Use tools like HW Monitor, CPU-Z, and CoreTemp to keep an eye on your CPU's temperature, voltage, and overall system health. Check these readings frequently, especially after making any changes. Keep your CPU temperature within safe limits, typically below 80 degrees Celsius under load, Invest in effective cooling solutions. A high-quality air cooler or liquid cooling system can make a significant difference in maintaining safe temperatures. Ensure your mini PC's airflow is optimal. 
clean dust filters regularly and consider adding extra fans if your case allows. Make changes incrementally. Increase your clock speed and voltage in small steps to avoid overwhelming your system. After each adjustment, save and reboot, then run a stress test to check for stability. This cautious approach helps prevent damage and maintains system stability. Always have a backup and recovery plan. Use backup software to create a system image before overclocking. Always have a backup and recovery plan. Use backup software to create a system image before overclocking. So to ensure a safe overclocking experience, monitor your system regularly, invest in effective cooling, make incremental changes, and always have a backup plan. With these safety tips, you're well equipped to overclock your mini PC safely. In the final section, we'll discuss troubleshooting common issues you might encounter. Stay tuned! In future videos, we will talk about troubleshooting common problems you might encounter when overclocking your mini PC. So subscribe for future videos. Bye for now!